I'm helping students make transitions, whether it's from one grade to the next or from one learning component to the next. And it comes with confidence. A lot of it is we don't know what we don't know. Being able to meet students where they're at and say, okay, we know that you know, you're having these gaps in your learning process. How can I be kind, considerate, compassionate, and really understand where you're at? Hello, Christine. How are you? Hi, Jory. How are you today? I'm great. And it's so good to see you. Good to see you as well. This is our second time. Yes. I think we're going to rock it this time. (laughs) All right. So can you share your background and experience in education uh, therapy? Sure. Um, My background didn't start off as an education therapist. I started off in sports medicine. So I have a bachelor's in sports medicine and very interested in neurobiology and neuroscience and um, just how uh, body movement is uh, connected to just our overall anatomy and physiology. And then I went back to school. I got a master's degree in special education. I was very interested in learning challenges um, and uh, got my master's in that. actually went back to school and got an endorsement in emotional behavior disorders, as well as a gifted endorsement um, for my master's because my son has ADHD. And when I was studying, right, that didn't quite fit into my understanding of learning challenges. It was over and above my expertise, and I felt a little bit of imposter syndrome. So I went back to school and got endorsements and then went back to school again and um, got a doctorate in education so I could not just help the the children and the students within my own class, but under my own roof, um, helping my own child. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, How is education therapy different from tutoring, Christine? Um, I'd like to think that tutoring is more about uh, helping individual content core areas. So if you have a student that's having trouble in math, you get a tutor that comes in and teaches them the strategy on how to do specific math problems, or maybe an um, an English uh, tutor that comes in and helps with scaffolding an essay, provides provides help and support. An education therapist, um, my job is to really bear down on the learning challenges that underlie the skills that are necessary to do the complex uh, cognitive thinking that is required in um, those challenging subjects. So I dig down into learning challenges that include um, critical thinking, um, problem solving, um, organization, time management, those are all executive functioning. And um, I know as an MD, as a physician, you know about executive functionings, but maybe individuals don't quite understand that they're the the part of your brain that doesn't fully develop till you're 26 years of age. So there's still time to help students. And typically students that have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or or ADD are um, several years behind. They lag in the development of some of these cognitive strategies. And as an education therapist, I provide the strategies to help them understand how they learn best and how to apply these strategies to help them make them more successful in school. And in life. we all need time management, right? We all need organization throughout our life. Yeah, yeah. This is such a needed service. Um, I'm a mom of a child who struggled uh, in kindergarten and first grade with uh, learning a learning disability and was behind in speech and some milestones. Um, I'm glad that through the support he received from the school system, he has come out um, on the other side. Um, but I still wish that someone like you was there when I was trying to, you know, scrambling for help. I. I get it. I've been in the school system for 19 years. So I've worked in public and private and charter. And my husband was in the military. So we did quite a lot of traveling. So everywhere he traveled, right, we moved, I would work in education. And this include, you know, overseas, as well as, you know, multiple states where I have license to teach. And at the end of the day, we know that there's an education um, shortage, teacher shortage right now, specifically special education teachers. So across the United States, there's a lack of teachers trained to work with students with special education needs within their school. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, there was a recent uh, um, research paper that came out that's saying about 75% of general education teachers don't feel adequately prepared 
to work with students with special education needs, specifically ADHD, where the students are integrated or included into general education classes. Mm -hmm. And it's a sink or swim, um, not just for the student, but for the teacher as well. If you don't have the strategies and you don't have the tools to help a child, Mm -hmm. you're just dealing with the behaviors. And parents are just, they get these notes home, your child's misbehave, your child's not completing homework, your child's not doing what they need to do to be successful. And parents are like, well, help us, help me help my child. And so that's kind of where education therapy comes in. We help you help your child. And um, I do it virtually and in, per- and in person. And people are like, how could you help in virtually? Well, that was my next question. I was like, how do you provide education therapy virtually? We have to change our paradigm of thinking, right? A lot of us are old school and we understand that, you know, we sit next to each other or across from each other and we fill their cup with knowledge, right? Everything that we know, we help them out. Well, we meet students where they're at and where they're at is oftentimes in front of their computer where they're watching their games or they're gaming or, you know, watching YouTube. And we pop into their space and say, hey, we're going to help you with some strategies. You really should be focusing on homework right now. Let's take that hour. Let's really bear down on what you need to do. Create to-do lists. Look at your time management. Let's look at your syllabus. Let's look at some of those things that are important in your life for schooling. And then you can do that later. You can make time for your video games. So we're not pulling them into a space where they're uncomfortable. We're meeting them where they're at. Yeah, awesome. So I'm sure um, you mentioned collaborating with teachers, um, parents, and I'm sure there's so many other professionals that you work with. How do you address the emotional and psychological barriers that might be there um, in case of some students because of, um, again, I I think that we have this. Yeah, I think they have this in common. You know, you're a coach and you're helping individuals make transitions, right? I'm helping students make transitions, whether it's from one grade to the next or from one learning component to the next. And it comes with confidence. A lot of it is we don't know what we don't know. And being able to meet students where they're at Mm -hmm. and say, okay, we know that, you know, you're having these gaps in your learning um, process. How can I be kind, considerate, compassionate, and really understand where you're at? We see in um, later grades, middle school, high school, and even college, um, behaviors and avoidance, procrastination in students that um, don't want to address areas that they have challenges with. Mm -hmm. So if we meet them very early on in their educational journey, and we're able to help them advocate, we're able to understand how they learn best. We bring the parents on board and we help the parents understand how to make a plan or how to support a child instead of that learned helplessness because the parent over parents and Mm -hmm. doesn't let them child really, you know, move into a space and be egocentric and take some responsibility. So I know parents spend a lot of money on athletic coaching and music for their child or ballet or whatever that looks like. But education and learning is so overlooked as a compensatory skill that will help them in life. In life. Yes. Because uh, I remember I'm a lifelong learner and I still am taking tests. I know coming up before the year ends <laughs> so yeah yeah so understanding how you learn best is um really a a gift that we can give or to anybody i do it with adults i just started seeing adults recently and um, after really specializing in you know that middle school high school college range I had some adults that were coming to my office saying they wanted help and support. And, you know, I just say, Hey, you know, I haven't done a whole lot of adults before, but I'm an adult and I have ADHD. Maybe I can impart some of my wisdom. Um, And it seems to go you, Christine. Yeah. It seems to really be working and they find it really helpful. Um, Especially if they have a spouse and the spouse doesn't quite understand Mm -hmm. that ADHD block Um, having somebody else, you know, say, these are some of the challenges. This is maybe some of the things you can do in your house to help and support. And it kind of opens the door to have that conversation instead of, you know, always, you know, you're not trying hard enough. You're not working hard enough. You're not focused enough. Things along those lines. Yeah. What What do you think are the key attributes of a successful education therapist? Mm, I think that's the if same. If you same. were hiring one for your child. Oh, relatability. Um, I have a unique perspective in the fact that not only have I been a teacher, right, in um, public and private schools, I'm, you know, 
tremendously certified throughout the states. I was also a Fulbright scholar, so I have a background. So it would definitely be, I'd like to choose somebody that was, you know, definitely in their field, a research oriented um, practitioner that understood research-based strategies. We have a lot of individuals in, in our community that have been teachers that now are coaches, but what does that look like? Um, my toolbox is rather full, so I would hope that you know an instructor that I work with does have the toolbox with all these, you know, augmentative strategies that can really support and help. Empathetic, empathy is yeah, huge. Absolutely, so important, yeah. right? Yeah, and not willing, not um, not unwilling to collaborate. Really, to have a holistic view and reach out to teachers and parents and to come down as a team to understand the whole child. So, somebody who's comfortable, you know, with showing up for the team so yeah so in the end is there something you would like to touch on that i forgot to ask i think um parents who are struggling to really understand a child that has a learning challenge um and being compassionate there's um a researcher carol dweck out of stanford and she talks a lot about growth mindset and i know for individuals that you help as well not getting stuck in a narrow paradigm where you know, we think that this is the end. We can't do, we can't move or grow. Mm -hmm. And research shows that we can, we can grow and we can move forward and we can develop neurons and new synapses and be able to um, learn new things. So I'd like just to impart um, maybe hope for individuals that they're able to see their potential and yes. uh, have that growth mindset. Yeah, absolutely. How do people contact you? Um, I'm available on the web at um, learningbyconnecting.com. It's one word, learning by connecting. Um, and I'm on Instagram and um, Facebook and uh, YouTube as well. So yeah, Dr. Christine Powell, look me up. Dr. Christine Powell, it was very nice talking to you. And we will touch base some other time again. Fantastic. I look forward to it.